At the time Rodney King was beaten by LAPD officers, he lived in Altadena, California. at 2530 North Lincoln, right here at this house. And here's a street view of the house that he lived in at that time. On the evening of March 2nd, 1991, Rodney King, his friends, Bryant Allen and Freddie Helms after watching basketball games at Bryant Allen's house, went driving around Altadena, California. They were sitting in King's wife's car drinking 40-ounce bottles of Old English 800 malt liquor. After a few hours of driving around, Rodney King wanted to take his two friends to a park his dad had taken him to in the past. So they entered the 210 freeway and headed west. Exit Street View. So they got onto the 210 freeway right here and began to drive west. It was 12.30 a.m. March 3rd, 1991, when CHP officer Tim Singer and his wife, CHP officer Melanie Singer, with Melanie driving the CHP vehicle, they observed a car approaching them from behind at a high rate of speed as they were heading west on the 210 freeway. As the car rapidly passed them, it slowed down to about 80 miles per hour, approximately right in here on the freeway, on the 210 West. Officer Melanie Singer exited the 210 Freeway at the Sunland exit right here, and then immediately re-entered the freeway in order to pace the speeding car. By the time they reached Wheatland, which is up here, the Wheatland exit. The car once again was traveling at a high rate of speed and as they approached the Osborne exit down here the car was paced between 110 to 115 miles per hour. That's 177 to 185 kilometers per hour and it was using all three lanes weaving in and out of traffic on the westbound 210. Shortly after passing Osborne, approximately right in here, Officer Singer turned on the lights and the siren, and the car slowed down to about 80 miles per hour, but did not stop. The speeding car continued up and exited Paxton Street, right here, made a left turn, running through red lights and stop signs, speeding down this residential area and made a left turn on North Glen Oaks Boulevard. The car continued to do 80 miles per hour in a 35 mile per hour zone. Once the car made it to Van Nuys Boulevard, it made a left turn running through the red light, causing other cars to slam on their brakes in order to avoid an accident and continued down Van Nuys Boulevard running stop signs and light signals. When they made it to Foothill Boulevard, the intersection of Van Nuys Boulevard and Foothill Boulevard, they made a right turn causing other vehicles to slam on their brakes to avoid an accident after the speeding vehicle ran another red light. The vehicle sped down Foothill Boulevard until it got to Terrabella Street running another red light at a high rate of speed, about 65 miles per hour in a 35 mile an hour zone, causing vehicles once again to slam on their brakes. And when the speeding vehicle made it to Osborne Street right here, it slammed its brakes on and stopped because there was another vehicle coming out of Osborne making a left turn. And in order to avoid a major collision, the speeding vehicle driven by Rodney King slammed its brakes on, stopped, and then continued on and was forced to stop
right about here because a big truck had moved over into the right lane, yielding to police sirens and lights. This caused Rodney King to come to a complete stop right here on this spot, which is where that famous beating began. One of the residents in this apartment complex named George Holliday heard the helicopter, heard the sirens, and heard the ruckus, and decided to go out and see what was going on. He had just bought a new video camera and took it with him and started filming the incident right here from this balcony right here. He was filming from here, shooting across to the car that was parked approximately right here, and Rodney King was being beaten pretty much in the middle of this number two lane right about in here. If we go down to street view, go back slightly, Here's the balcony it was filmed from right here. And if you turn, you can see this telephone pole at the back of Rodney King's car, which is parked approximately right here. And he's being beaten right about here on this spot. So here I am at the location where Rodney King was beat. His car was parked approximately right in here and he was beaten about here on the street. It was filmed from this apartment right here, the apartment and the balcony. He filmed it from that balcony over this way. And this is what it looks like today. Exit. Rodney King was arrested here at the scene and his friends Bryant Allen and Freddie Helms were released and left here by the LAPD. Eventually the four officers were tried and they were found not guilty of excessive force, which angered thousands of citizens in the city of Los Angeles. And it was here in the heart of Los Angeles, what they call South Central Los Angeles, that technically the first building to be looted was right here at the corner of Florence and Dalton Avenue and it was this liquor store right here. Go down to Street View. They went into this Korean owned liquor store and began to steal liquor. When the owner's son tried to stop them, somebody smashed a bottle of liquor over his head, and when others came out of the front, they took their bottles of liquor and smashed in the front windows to this liquor store at this corner. Shortly afterwards, down here on the corner of Florence and Normandy, right here, angry crowds began to gather and they began to throw objects at passing cars and pulling drivers out of their vehicles and beating them. If we go down to Street View, you can see this is Florence which runs east and west. Normandy runs north and south. In some of the early helicopter news footage you can see a crowd of people gathered on this corner right here and they're throwing objects at cars that are passing by. As things progress, the first store to be looted on this corner was Tom's Liquor Store. It is now called Tom's Market. Back then it was called Tom's Liquor Store and it was through this door right here that they began to loot the first buildings at this intersection. They also began to loot this gas station across the street from Tom's Liquor. In addition to that, structures 
Just to the east of Tom's Liquor Store were lit on fire and pretty much all burned to the ground. These are new structures that you see here today. While this was going on, numerous individuals were pulled from their vehicles and beaten. One of them was stopped right here in a white delivery truck. He was pulled from the vehicle and beaten right here at this intersection while looters went into the back of his truck and took all of his merchandise. One of the more famous scenes was that of Reginald Denning, who drove his emptied gravel truck up this intersection and went around the vehicle that had just been looted right here. And as he came through the intersection, he was stopped right about here with the cab up here and the truck blocking the intersection. He was pulled out of the vehicle and pretty much beaten right here on this spot that you can see right here in front of this yellow line right here. I'm going to exit street view. So Reginald Denning was pretty much hit on the right side of his head with a brick right about where the left front tire of this vehicle is right here. This is the intersection. Tom's liquor store is behind that sign. So here is the intersection. There's Tom's liquor store. And Reginald Benning was beat right there. And this is the corner where the group gathered and started throwing objects at vehicles. Florence and Normandy. Now, as buildings were lit on fire here in Los Angeles, including everything that was, like I said, to the east of Tom's Liquor, right in here, Rodney King was told what was going on, and he did not like it. So he stood in front of news cameras and said his famous words, can we all just get along? Clearly meaning that he did not want all of this happening because of what happened to him. The riots began on April 29, 1992 and lasted five days. Order was only restored after 13,500 army soldiers and marines began to patrol the city. In the end, 54 people were killed and 3,767 structures were damaged, with 862 of those structures being burned to the ground. The 1992 Los Angeles riots became known as the worst riots of the century. Rodney King would later say he ran from police because he was on parole after serving two years in prison for a robbery he committed, and he was afraid a DUI would violate his parole and send him back to prison. Prior to his beating, he had a fairly long record of violating the law, and after his beating, he continued to add to that long record by violating the law and actually doing some more jail time. I won't go into the details of all of his arrests and all of his violations, but they were extensive. Rodney was awarded $3.8 million from the city of Los Angeles, and he eventually bought a house in Rialto, California, and moved in with his fiancée, Cynthia Kelly. And this is the house that he bought and moved into with his fiancée, Cynthia Kelly, right here. On Father's Day, June 17th, 2012, a little bit after 5.20 a.m., Cynthia Kelly heard a splash in the pool, this pool right here. When she went outside to see what it was, she found Rodney face down at the bottom of the deep end of the pool, right here. She did not pull him from the pool because, number one, she could not swim, and number two, he was too heavy for her anyway. So she called the police about 5.25 a.m. When police arrived, they pulled him out and performed CPR. 
He was transported to Arrowhead Regional Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead on arrival at 6.11 a.m. So here I am at the house where Rodney King passed away in his swimming pool. It's now a private residence. Somebody else lives there. I don't want to bother them. But this is the house where Rodney King passed away. An autopsy report later would call it an accidental drowning due to alcohol, cocaine, and PCP found in his system. He was interred at Forest Lawn Park Cemetery in Los Angeles. right here and his exact burial site is right about in here here I am at the Forest Lawn Cemetery on the other side of those hills is Hollywood and the Hollywood sign just on the other side of that hill and right here is Rodney King's final resting place. Rodney G. King, beloved son, brother, father, grandfather, uncle, cousin, friend, April 2nd, 1965, June 17th, 2012. Can we all get along? So there you have it. A brief overview of the Rodney King incident that led to the 1992 Los Angeles riots right here on Google Earth.